Chuck E. Cheese's, known as the place where a kid can be a kid, has been a part of everyone's childhood, including me. This popular pizza chain with arcades and animatronics has spread all around the globe, from California to Texas to Florida to Illinois. But there's one location that I would like to talk about, and that place is Aurora, Colorado. This is one of the most infamous and most talked about locations in all of Chuck E. Cheese history, and not for good reasons. But while everyone is familiar with the location the incident took place at, there's actually more to Chuck E. Cheese in Aurora, Colorado than most people know about, and that's where I come in. So in this video, I will be going over the history of the three Chuck E. Cheese locations to call Aurora home. That's right, there's three of them. From the location everyone knows about, to the one most have probably never heard of, to the current location. This is the history of Chuck E. Cheese in Aurora, Colorado. So before I talk about Chuck E. Cheese's and Aurora, Colorado, I want to quickly go over the history of each one. Chuck E. Cheese's was founded on May 17, 1977, and opened its first location in San Jose, California. It was created by Nolan Bushnell, who was also the co-founder of the video game company, Atari. He wanted to make a place that families could hang out and play the latest arcade games, since before this, arcades were seen as dangerous places due to violence. As for Aurora, Colorado's history, it's a little complex. Aurora, Colorado was created on April 30th, 1891 as a suburb of Denver, Colorado. The town was originally known as Fletcher, Colorado. The town was originally the source of a water system, but that was stopped due to a drought and decrease in population. In 1907, the town would be renamed to Aurora, and in 1928, it would officially become a city. It currently has a population of 393,537 as of 2022, making it the third largest city in the state of Colorado. Obviously a great place for a big fat pizza rat to expand to. However, while I've been mentioning Chucky a lot, he wasn't the first one to set up Shack. Instead, it was a certain one-toothed bear in overalls who called the Gateway to the Rockies home. Back in the early 80s, it was announced that a new family pizzeria would be opening in Aurora. This restaurant was still relatively new, but it was already a fan favorite. So what was this restaurant? Well, it was none other than Showbiz Pizza Place. Now, if you don't know what Showbiz Pizza Place is, then let me explain. So the history of Showbiz Pizza is a little complicated, but to summarize, Showbiz Pizza was founded on March 3rd, 1980, and opened its first location in Kansas City, Missouri. It was founded by Robert Brock, who was also the founder of the Brock Hotel Corporation. He was originally a franchisee with Pizza Time Theater, but then saw companies making more advanced animatronics and decided to start his own company, with the help of Aaron Fector, the founder of Creative Engineering. I'll talk more about their history as the video goes on, but for now, let's get back to Aurora. The Showbiz Pizza Place of Aurora, Colorado opened on January 28, 1981, to the joy of locals everywhere. It was the 10th Showbiz Pizza location to ever open. The restaurant was located on East Illiff Avenue, and was a part of a small shopping plaza known as Illiff Commons, though back then it was known as the London Square Shopping Center. Unfortunately, there is very little documentation on this location when it was a Showbiz Pizza. Well, at least in terms of photos and videos, though there is some, but for the purpose of this video, I will be using some footage and photos from other showbiz locations. 
The exterior, while not having any photos from its showbiz days, was pretty much your standard showbiz pizza exterior most other locations had, with the large protruding entrance and logo. Similarly, no photos of the interior when it first opened exist, but again it probably looked like any other early showbiz location, complete with fluorescent lighting and the red and yellow colors. As for what they had to offer, they had a large game room with over 50 arcade games. Some of the games at this location include the classic Ski Ball, and other games such as Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man, Air Hockey, Whack-A-Mole, Dig Dug, Centipede, Galaga, Road Blasters, Pole Position, Paperboy, Bowler Roller, Bubble Hockey, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They also had Hogan's Alley. This is important for later. Some of these games would come and go throughout the years. Fun fact, apparently a kid visiting this location actually managed to get 43,000 tickets. I believe it may have been in one visit too. And for smaller children, there was a section of the restaurant that was just for them. It contained scaled down games, a slide, and a magic cave. Which I still don't entirely know what that is, but I couldn't find any photos of it. But I'm guessing it was probably a play place. There were also kiddie rides there, such as this weird car thing, and the classic Billy Bob merry-go-round. The restaurant also had a ball pit. There was also a salad bar, which is important for what happens later in the timeline. There were two dining areas at this showbiz pizza, the first being the sports room. This room had a large TV that played things like soap operas, and as the name implies, sports games. And there were probably some sports decorations on the walls. Most of it was probably Denver team related. There was also some sit-down games in that room. But the second dining area was the main dining area, referred to as the showroom. This is where you could go to get the real entertainment, provided by the Rockafire Explosion Band. This band of animated animals performed on three stages, singing popular songs and performing comedy routines every eight minutes. The characters on the stage included Rolf the Wolf with his puppet Earl, Duke LaRue the drum playing dog, Fats Geronimo the gorilla on the keyboard, Beach Bear on the guitar, Mitzi Mozzarella the lead female singer who's a mouse, and Billy Bob the bear who plays the guitar, and who's also the mascot of Showbiz Pizza. And last but certainly not least, Looney Bird the drunk bird who drinks gas and lives in a can. There were also a few prop characters that would pop up from time to time, such as the sun, the moon, Choo Choo the Bear Cub, and the birthday spider named Antioch. An interesting thing to point out is that since this was one of the first showbiz pizza locations to open, the store actually featured a beta Rockafire explosion, aka the first one produced. You can tell it's the beta version by the way the masks look and Duke's outfit, also the sign in the background, but a few years later they would get the standard and more well-known Rockafire stage. Also, it's very possible this location had guest characters like Uncle Clunk, Santa Claus, and the Statue of Liberty. I couldn't find any confirmation, but I believe they had these characters since I believe all early showbiz locations got these characters. Finally, there was a Billy Bob mascot who was used when the band wasn't performing, or when there was a birthday party. Billy Bob also made multiple appearances outside of showbiz pizza around the Aurora or Denver area. The showbiz pizza of Aurora, Colorado remained virtually the same throughout the 1980s, but by the late 80s, this is when major changes occurred. The main thing to take place was a new remodel, dubbed the Showbiz Pizza Time 1986 remodel. This is the remodel that introduced the white backgrounds, with the red, blue, green, and yellow colors in the logo, and the checkers. I actually don't know if Aurora got the new logo on the exterior, but it is possible, other than that and the addition of new games and rides, the location mostly stayed the same. As for the Rockafire Explosion, they stayed the exact same except for Billy Bob and Looney Bird stage. That stage was changed from Smitty Super Service Station to the Showbiz Pizza Campground. This was done to make the stage more unique compared to other Rockafire stages at different Showbiz Pizzas. Finally, since Chuck E. Cheese and Showbiz Pizza merged a few years before, that means there was going to be some crossover between the two brands. So by the early 1990s, Chuck E. Cheese made his official debut at the Aurora Showbiz Pizza. 
But little did local residents realize that Chuck's stay in Aurora was going to be a little more permanent than they thought. But before we continue with this location's history, I'm going to go back a few years and take a little detour. Since at the same time Showbiz opened, another place opened just a few miles away. That place was another pizza restaurant, run by the powerful rat himself, Chuck E. Cheese. There's a Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater near you. In 1982, just one year after Showbiz opened, Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza Time Theater would also open a location in Aurora, Colorado. The exact month or date are unknown, except for the fact that it opened in 1982. The restaurant was located on Peoria Street, which is actually pretty close to the Showbiz. This wasn't uncommon as both Chuck E. Cheese and Showbiz would often try to one-up each other by rapidly expanding and opening new locations miles apart from each other. It was located in the Hoffman Heights Shopping Center and was 12,000 square feet of fun. While the Showbiz location didn't have much in terms of photos or information, Aurora's Pizza Time Theater has even less. I could find almost nothing on this location aside from a few things, no newspaper articles, no videos, not even any posts from Facebook groups who remember the location. So most of this chapter will be based off speculation. Miraculously, despite there being little to no info on this store, we do have a photo of what the exterior looked like. As you can see, it looks pretty great. One of the best Pizza Time Theater exteriors, in my opinion. It's a large brown building with yellowish orangish lights just below the sign and large windows. Above the entrance doors, you can see the classic Chuck E. Cheese logo, and below that are some portrait posters. Also, you can't really see it, but the Chuck E. Cheese logo is also present near the letters. As for the interior, again, no photos exist, but I can assume it looked like any other Pizza Time Theater location. Dark with orangish-brown booths, picnic tables, and low lights hanging from the ceiling. They of course had a game room as well as an area for kitty rides. In one of the few photos I could find of the location, we can see they had a black train ride, and if you look behind that, you can see the Chuck E. Cheese carousel. And finally, they had a giant ball pit, and probably had other play structures too. And just like every other Pizza Time Theater around the same time, they had an animatronic stage referred to as the balcony stage. Since the animatronics were on a balcony attached to the wall, there was also a large maze at the bottom of the stage where kids could crawl around under the animatronics. And speaking of the animatronics, they were the real stars of the restaurant, as they performed 7-8 to eight minute shows daily every 15 minutes. They were called the Pizza Time Players, and it included the Warblet Singing Birds, Chuck E. Cheese, Jasper T. Jowls, Mr. Munch, and Pasquale the Chef. They also had a guest character, none other than the piggy from Paris, Madame Oink. Now, I don't know if Aurora's location actually had Madame Oink when they first opened, since their opening date is unknown. For example, if the location opened in early 1982, then they could have had Harmony Howlett, the current guest star at the time. But I know for a fact they did have Madame Oink at some point since in that photo of the location's exterior, you can see a Madame Oink poster if you zoom in. However, by 1983 she would be replaced by Helen Henney. But interestingly, I found this photo which might be from Aurora, which shows the Madame Oink backdrop is still on the stage, despite Helen taking over. Again, not sure if this is from Aurora, but nice carpet though. And of course, they had a Chuck E. Cheese mascot suit, but there's a chance they might have had the other characters like Jasper, Munch, or Pasquale too, if this photo is anything to go off of. Finally, it isn't known which cabaret or lounge character this location had, but my top two candidates are Dolly Dimples or The King. I'm betting it was probably The King, since he was the most common of the two characters. 
And that's pretty much it in terms of this location. It remained pretty much the same for the rest of its existence, hosting a few events here and there, and having their walk-around costumes appear at local events. Like this one where Chucky milked a cow. However, on an unknown date in 1984, the location permanently closed after only two years in operation. The exact reason for the closure is unknown, but I can probably guess what shut it down. So as most CEC fans know, in 1984, Pizza Time Theater filed for Chapter 11 bankruptcy as a result of declining sales due to the video game crash of 1983. So during the bankruptcy, CEC sold off a bunch of their locations, one of those being the Aurora location as seen in this newspaper ad. Maybe there wasn't a buyer for that location so it was closed down? There's also a chance that the store just wasn't popular enough to keep open. I mean, Showbiz was already open a whole year before it, and most people probably just went to that over Pizza Time Theater, not to mention its close proximity to the location. But whatever the reason was, the restaurant was closed and everything was removed, sold off, destroyed, etc, etc. Afterwards, the space Chuck E. Cheese once occupied was split in half to become two separate stores. It had a few tenants over the years, but as of today, the space is now a family dollar and wash time laundry, with no visible remnants of CEC anywhere, which is to be expected. If you would like to visit the former location, the address is 634 Peora Street, Aurora, Colorado, 80011. It is located in the Hoffman Heights Shopping Center. But going back to the timeline, luckily Showbiz Pizza purchased Pizza Time Theater from bankruptcy, and the two companies merged. This brings us back to the Aurora Showbiz location, where Chucky was now setting up Shack, but things were about to change for better or worse for the location. What do you get when you take a showbiz pizza place and change the name to Chuck E. Cheese's? That's right. You get the same terrific pizza, the same fun and games. They're just naming the place after me. So look for the new sign, Chuck E. Cheese's, where a kid can be a kid. As the early 90s came along, the Showbiz Pizza in Aurora, Colorado was still going strong, but behind the scenes within the Showbiz Pizza Time Incorporated company, things were anything but going strong. You see, the company was trying to get the rights to the Rockefeller Explosion, but Aaron Fector, the creator of the Rockefeller Explosion, didn't want to give up the rights to the band, and so instead the company created something that would make a Showbiz fan's spine tingle, Concept Unification. For those of you unaware, concept unification was this process where the Rockefeller explosion would go completely extinct and be stripped down to their mechs, only to be replaced by the Chuck E. Cheese characters, also known as Munch's make-believe band. Rolf the Wolf became Chuck E. Cheese himself, Mitzi Mozzarella became Helen Henny, Fats Geronimo became Mr. Munch, Beach Bear became Jasper T. Jowls, and Duke LaRue became Pasquale the Chef. The prop characters were also replaced, the sun became the building, Choo Choo became Munch Jr., Looney Bird became Pizza Cam, and the spider was removed completely and replaced with the wink. The moon, however, stayed behind. This change to the animatronics wasn't the only thing that changed, as the whole company was rebranded and the showbiz pizza name was dropped, in favor of the name Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza, though some stores still kept the showbiz name. I believe the Aurora location didn't keep the showbiz name, Instead, they opted to change it to Chuck E. Cheese's Pizza. Which, speaking of Aurora, they received concept unification around 1991. This saddened many showbiz fans as the characters they knew and loved for years was now dead, and in their place were essentially knockoffs. Now, I do actually like the Chuck E. Cheese bots, but it's still sad to see the Rock of Fire go. You can actually watch the full concept unification tape on YouTube, but I will warn you, it might make you cry. Around the same time of the rebrand, the restaurant underwent a small remodel. This remodel mostly just got rid of anything Showbiz or Rockefeller related and replaced it with Chuck E. Cheese branding, like posters and the exterior logos. They would also receive some new games. 
Also, while they did already have a Chucky costume, they would also receive a Helen, Pasquale, and Jasper costume. They might have also gotten Munch too, but I'm not sure. And from that point onwards, the location continued with business as usual. That was until a certain day. A day that would go down in CEC history forever. A tragedy that despite happening so long ago, still had a massive impact. And I'm warning you now, if you're uncomfortable with certain heavy topics, then please skip this chapter. You can skip to this timestamp if needed. On December 14th, 1993, the worst incident in CEC history occurred at the Aurora location. It's gone by many names, but most refer to it as the Chuck E. Cheese Massacre. That's because it involved the killing of four innocent lives. The person responsible for this was 19-year-old Nathan Gerard Dunlap. Now, Dunlap was a troubled individual, as according to many who knew him, or heard about him, he was often quiet, but did have many issues. He had a very bad childhood as his mother suffered from bipolar and constantly abused him and his siblings. His father wasn't much better as he too would beat Nathan, even in public. Dunlap also had a criminal record prior to the tragedy. He had many run-ins with the law, from robbing places to selling drugs. In May 1993, Nathan got a job at the Aurora Chuck E. Cheese's as a kitchen worker, but this didn't last long, as just two months later in July 1993, he was fired after he and his manager had disagreements over scheduling hours. Though despite being fired, he would still visit the restaurant frequently to visit former co-workers, but the more he visited, the more angry he would get, and many times he would mention how he was going to return there and rob the store. Most of his co-workers didn't think much of this. That was until the day in question. On the night of Tuesday, December 14, 1993, shortly before 9 p.m., Dunlap entered the restaurant. He ordered a ham and cheese sandwich and played an arcade game, more specifically, a shooter game, and even more specifically, Hogan's Alley. At 9.50 p.m., 10 minutes before closing, Nathan went to hide in the bathrooms and waited until the store closed for the night. While in there, he kept amping himself up and preparing himself for what he was about to do next. At 10.05 p.m., five minutes after closing, he exited the bathroom and pulled out a 25 caliber handgun and proceeded to shoot anyone in the restaurant he saw. In total, he shot five people all working their night shift jobs. The first victim was 20-year-old Sylvia Crowell, who was cleaning the salad bar when she was shot in the right ear and was wounded. The next victim was 17-year-old Ben Grant, who was shot near his left eye while he was vacuuming the floor. The third victim was 17-year-old Colleen O'Connor, who after witnessing the previous shootings, she sank to her knees and pleaded for her life, but Dunlap showing no remorse, shot her in the forehead, killing her instantly. Meanwhile, outside the restaurant, 20-year-old kitchen worker Bobby Stevens was on his smoke break. He did hear the gunshot sounds, but just assumed that it was kids nearby popping balloons. After his break, he went back inside the restaurant and began putting kitchen utensils in the dishwasher. Then Dunlap entered the kitchen and shot Stevens in the jaw. The final victim was 50-year-old Margaret Kohlberg, who was the night manager. Actually, it was her first day as a solo manager. She was in the back room counting money when Dunlap came in. He forced her to open a safe and when she did, he shot her in the ear. Dunlap then took the money from the safe but when he saw that Marge was still moving, he shot her in her other ear, this time killing her. The manager that actually fired Nathan back in July wasn't working that day. After committing the crime, Dunlap took $1,500 in cash from the safe, along with Chuck E. Cheese tokens and keychains. After that, he left the store feeling very satisfied with himself for what he just did, but this story is far from over. I have yet to mention something about one of the victims, and that's the outcome of Bobby Stevens, the fourth person shot by Dunlap. After he was shot in the jaw, he played dead by staying as still as possible until Nathan left the kitchen. 
Afterwards, he ran through the restaurant and out one of the side doors. He then ran to some nearby apartments and told people that there was a shooting at the Chuck E. Cheese and to call 911. He was then sent to the Denver General Hospital, where he survived and made a full recovery. Here's a sample of the 911 phone call. Well, emergency 911. Listen, I have a man who's been shot at my house right here. He, he came from Chuck E. Cheese. He claims there's been a lot of people shot there. Put another call in for Chuck E. Cheese. When police and paramedics arrived, they saw all the bodies, two in the main hallway, one in a back room, and one that was off the hallway. It's rumored to be the showroom. Pretty soon, Chuck E. Cheese would be surrounded by nothing but police cars, ambulances, caution tape, and many concerned bystanders and victims' family members. Speaking of the showroom, one eerie piece of trivia for this incident is that during the investigation of the crime scene, the animatronics were still performing. Since the shooting occurred just minutes after closing, no one was able to go turn off the show. Some police did try to get the show shut off, but obviously there was more important things to be concerned about, like providing aid to the injured bodies. The victims who were wounded were immediately rushed to the hospital, but sadly, none of them made it. Chuck E. Cheese, what was once a place that brought joy to many kids and adults, was now the site of one of the worst tragedies in Colorado history. Meanwhile, while all of this was going on, Nathan Dunlap, after initially leaving the restaurant, he went to a friend's house and told him what he just did, and began counting the money. He then called his girlfriend and went to her house where he once again told her about the crime he just did. Back at the restaurant, Dunlap's mom was told by police to call his phone and get him to come talk to the cops. But Nathan wasn't in a hurry as he took a shower and cleaned his hands with peroxide to get rid of evidence on him. Then his girlfriend took his clothes and his gun and hid it behind a shed up the road from her house. After that, he went to another friend's house to confess what he did, before finally going back to his home where he was greeted and questioned by police. However, he was not arrested that night. It wouldn't be until nine days later on December 23, 1993, where he was finally arrested and charged with four counts of first-degree murder, attempted murder, robbery, and burglary. His girlfriend was also arrested and served five years in jail. Now from here onwards, the story of Nathan Dunlap is very complex and too long for this video. Also, it kind of strays too far away from this video's main topic, that being Chuck E. Cheese. So I will just be summarizing key events that happened after his arrest. So three years later in 1996, Dunlap went to court and after a very heated and profanity-filled trial, he was found guilty on all charges and given the death penalty. His execution would be held in August 2013. However, 2013 came and went, but Dunlap wasn't executed. So, why? Well, in May 2013, Dunlap submitted a petition of clemency to the then governor of Colorado, John Hickenlooper. He claimed that he was sorry for what he did and was suffering from bipolar, though I don't think anyone was buying that. But later that same month, while he wasn't granted clemency, he was given a temporary reprieve, so as long as John Hickenlooper was governor, Dunlap would not be executed. As years went by, John Hickenlooper was no longer governor, but Nathan Dunlap was still not executed. Finally, in March 2020, Colorado decided to abolish the death penalty, for some reasons unknown. This meant that Dunlap was now no longer going to be killed, but instead his sentence was changed to life in prison without parole. This of course outraged the victim's family since they were promised this monster would be killed, but then wasn't. But to them, it seems like Dunlap got away with it. So now that Nathan Dunlap's story is over, for now, you're probably wondering what was the response by the company to the whole incident. Well, Showbiz Pizza Time Incorporated expressed great sorrow and offered assistance to the victims' families, and as to be expected, the location closed indefinitely. But surprisingly, the company was actually planning to reopen the location. Apparently, after the shooting took place, the company received many letters and phone calls by people from Aurora, begging the company to keep the store open. Even some of the victims' families were okay with the restaurant reopening. 
Pretty soon, it was announced that Chuck E. Cheese's would reopen in April 1994, with the building being completely remodeled, as well as a dedication and reopening ceremony. There was almost instantly backlash from the victims' families, who were furious with this announcement. While they were fine with the store reopening, they were mad at the company for how they handled the whole situation by making the families keep the reopening a secret. Likely due to this, public backlash, and out of respect for the victims and their families, CEC decided it probably wasn't worth it to reopen. So on April 20th, 1994, the location officially closed permanently. Pretty soon after, or at least after the investigation of the building, everything inside was removed. The animatronics' whereabouts are unknown, but it's likely they were either sent back to corporate or other locations for spare parts, or destroyed and trashed. But honestly, who cares about that? The fate of some rusty old robots is the least of concern when a more serious thing happened, like four innocent lives being taken too soon. After it was shut down, there was a discussion over what to do with the building. One idea was to convert the building into a family resource center, complete with a daycare and counseling. Kinda ironic considering what happened there. The idea never happened, and soon after the space was split in half and contained a few businesses throughout the years. As of 2024, one part of the building is a Panera Bread, while the other half is an affordable dentures and implants. Unfortunately, there's no memorial for the shooting. While the victims did all get proper funerals, many have been calling for the city to put a memorial or plaque or something at the location. Yeah, I agree. There needs to be a memorial at the site. If you would like to visit the site of the former location, then the address is 12293 East Illith Avenue, Aurora, Colorado 80014. It is located near the Illith Commons Shopping Center. To close this chapter, all I can say is rest in peace to all the victims of that horrible night, and my thoughts and prayers are with their families. The same also applies to Bobby Stevens, the lone survivor. I hope he's doing good now. As for Nathan Dunlap, go rotten hell. Practice and I'll take you to Chuck E. Cheese's. The non-stop fun of Chuck E. Cheese's. What did you do to deserve it? Good God, hell it. Five years after the closure of the previous location, Chuck E. Cheese decided to make a comeback to Aurora, Colorado. This is strange, since you would think that Chuck E. Cheese would want nothing to do with the city after the shooting. But I mean, there were people who wanted the previous location to reopen after the incident. So maybe they decided to open a new location to satisfy those people? Either that, or it was probably because of money. Regardless of what people thought, the brand new Chuck E. Cheese's of Aurora, Colorado opened on November 2nd, 1999. The restaurant is located on East Exposition Avenue and is a part of the Aurora City Square Shopping Center. It was originally a honey crust pizza before becoming a CEC. Its store number is 7110. When the store first opened, it was a Phase 3 store, and yes, this is the only photo I could find of the location during this phase. You can't really make out too much detail, but as you can see, it does resemble most other Phase 3 locations. It has the red and yellow awnings and the yellow Coach Chuck logo. Since no photos exist of the location, I'm not sure what they actually had, but judging by other locations, they most likely had all the standard Phase 3 decor like the wall planners, sports decor, and equipment, and parody posters. One cool piece of decor this location had was in the breezeway. Right when you walked in, you were greeted by a pointing Chucky sign, one of the rarest CEC wall decors made. I don't know how many locations had this, but I know there were very few of them. And like other locations, they had the sky tubes and the toddler zone, both staples of Phase 3 stores. They even had both balcony seating and showroom walls and of course, the wide variety of games and rides which I'll mention later. Speaking of showroom, that's a good transition to the next part of the restaurant to discuss. That's right, the stage, which this time Aurora's location had a Studio C Alpha. 
The Studio C Alpha stage consisted of a blue screen with an interactive camera, a large panel with an interactive console, and a TV. And of course, the stage which had a 32-movement Chuggy e. Cheese animatronic created by the Garner Holt Company. The stage also has a parrot, a pizza phone, a pizza time clock, and an Apple TV. The bot originally had a traditional Studio C outfit, then the Cool Chuck outfit, and then the Avenger outfit. Then around 2014 he switched to the Rockstar outfit, though he still kept the Avenger shirt. The restaurant would remain virtually the same for the next 10 years or so. The only major changes being made included new games and rides being added. Eventually, around 2008 or 2009, the store would undergo a remodel. This time it would be converted into a Phase 4 store. This meant all the 90s decor would be removed and replaced with all new up-to-date posters and decor. Except for one. The pointing Chuck sign in the breezeway got to remain behind. The exterior saw a big change with the red awnings being replaced with purple ones, brown checkers on the front entrance, and the Chucky logo now being the Avenger Chuck Thumbs Up logo. The remodel also saw the removal of balcony seating and showroom walls. But surprisingly, there were a few remnants of Phase 3 left behind in the Phase 4 remodel, not just the pointing Chuck sign. Some older games and rides remained, along with the sky tubes and even the toddler zone stayed. The archway for the area was also kept unlike most other locations. Now to go over what the location had to offer for games and rides. Some of these aren't there anymore, but the location did have these at some point in their history. Anyways, some games at the store include Air Hockey, Guitar Hero, The Price is Right, Jumpin' Fantasy, Deal or No Deal, Skee Ball, Many Basketball Games, Dog Pounder, Dino Pop, and Buzzy Buzzy B. Newer games added later included Slither.io, Monopoly, and Barrel of Monkeys. As for rides, these include a fire truck, the Kentucky Derby, a carousel, the hot chocolate cup, a very creepy bus, the infamous clock ride, and a fan favorite of the channel, the giraffe ride. Probably one of the best rides CEC has, as you get a good panoramic view of the whole restaurant. Oh, and I can't forget the Chucky photo ride, which went through a few changes throughout the years. And that's pretty much it for this location, or at least during its first 20 years. Not many changes occurred, other than new games and rides being added and the Studio C Alpha being changed up a bit. This includes the removal of the blue screen and camera along with the console. It was replaced with the Ticket Blaster background, since the Ticket Blaster was moved to that spot. You know what? That backdrop looks pretty familiar. I feel like I've seen it before. But unfortunately, nearly 20 years after first opening their doors, this CEC location would be changed for the worse. Welcome to Chuck E. Cheese headquarters, where kids make the rules. That's why I invented all you can play. The parentals pick the time. You can play all the games you want and win more tickets than ever, only at Chuck E. Cheese. In late 2019, the location underwent its most recent remodel. This time it was turned into the ABOMINATION known as CEC 2.0. Unfortunately, I don't have a proper timeline for when this location underwent the remodel, but I know it started somewhere between May and July 2019, and it was completed in September. The exterior didn't see too much change, Really, the only changes made were to the signage. The main part where the logo was is now green, with that crappy Microsoft Paint No Eyebrows Chucky logo, and the white Chucky e. Cheese font. The sides of the logo also now have these brown circular designs. The restaurant's name was also changed from Chuck E. Cheese's to just Chuck E. Cheese. Also, I don't know if it's still like this, but the logo I previously mentioned is in really bad shape. As for the interior, this is where the main changes took place. All the old store art was trashed and replaced with some new artwork, some of the older games were thrown out and newer games were added, and both the Sky Tubes and Toddler Zone were removed. The worst part about the remodel was of course the change 2.0 is best known for. They removed the animatronics. This is really disappointing, 
since Aurora Studio C was actually in pretty good shape in terms of both the cosmetics and mechanical parts. As for what happened to him, he and the rest of the stage were sadly destroyed. Rest in peace, Aurora Bot. So you're probably wondering what replaced the animatronic. Well, it was of course a crappy dance floor and TVs, and the space the show was now has portraits of the characters, Helen, Munch, Jasper, Pasquale, and Chucky in that order. However, since Aurora was an older 2.0 remodel, there's some things about it that make it kind of unique compared to newer 2.0 remodels. For example, their dance floor is way bigger compared to newer remodels. It also has a purple border and individual LED lights that are able to make patterns. Unlike today's dance floors, which are just giant TVs on the floor. Speaking of TVs, the TVs above the dance floor also shows how old this remodel is, as instead of being a giant TV on the wall, it's six TVs mounted above the dance floor. The grand opening of the newly remodeled Chuck E. Cheese's of Aurora, Colorado was on September 30th, 2019. There was a ribbon cutting ceremony where Chuck E. Cheese himself helped cut the ribbon as well as hosting a dance party. While most Aurora residents were happy that Chuck E. Cheese was finally open again with a new look, others were mad simply because it's a 2.0. Surprisingly, this is not where this location's history ends as another minor remodel occurred recently. So a few years after the location first received 2.0, some things would be changed to make the location look a little more like a modern 2.0. These include getting rid of the TVs above the dance floor, and the backdrop with the character portraits would also now have a video wall. To accompany the video wall, the character portraits order would change. It was now Munch, Helen, Jasper, and Chucky. But weirdly, Pasquale is missing. But apparently they do still have the cutout backstage and might put him back up on the wall. Who knows? Maybe he will return, maybe he won't. And that brings us to today. As of January 2024, the Chuck E. Cheese's location in Aurora, Colorado is alive and a little scratched up as a 2.0 store. It currently has a 3.6 star rating on Google, so not the worst, but also not the very best. If you would like to visit this location, then the address is 14005 East Exposition Avenue, Aurora, Colorado, 80012. It is located in the Aurora City Square Shopping Center. And with that being said, this officially concludes the history of Chuck E. Cheese's in Aurora, Colorado. And there you have it, the history of Chuck E. Cheese's in Aurora, Colorado. This... this was a tough location to cover. Not just because of the shooting, but also the lack of information and photos not related to the incident. That's why it also took a while to release. That, and also Christmas delayed a few plans, but I'm thankful I was able to finish the location's history. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments section down below. Please like, share, and subscribe, and comment down below if you have any memories from visiting this location, or if there's anything that I missed. Also, I request that you please be respectful if you're commenting about the shooting. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time on the History of Series. Bye-bye!